We now know that a 2x2 two two matrix is either similar to a diagonal matrix D or to a scaling rotation matrix C. This means that we can view any linear mapping from R2 to R2 either as a stretching or as a scaling and a rotation. How precisely? That's the subject of this video. In a summary, the first case we have a 2x2 two two matrix with two real eigenvalues. In that case, we know that we can write A as P D times P inverse. So A is similar to a diagonal matrix. How does that look as a transformation? We can find linear transformation T from R2 to R2. T of X is AT times X. Then we can choose as a new basis the basis of the two eigenvectors of A, V1 and V2. And then we get the following picture. Here we have our X. The transformation A maps it to T of X. We can also give the B coordinates of a vector x, turned by r down over here. We get the xb, which is mapped to x by the matrix pb, which consists of the two eigenvectors. We can do the same mapping over here, going down, up. We need to make the, the matrix pb to find t of x, if we know t of x in the basis b. But instead of going, say, from xb via x via a to t of x in the basis b, we can go directly with the matrix M. And we know M is p inverse times a times pb. And because we chose as basis b the basis of eigenvectors, we know that pb is exactly equal to p, which means that M becomes pb inverse times a, which is pd, p inverse times pb. And the pb inverse and, and the p's cancel out. So the M becomes a diagonal matrix. So in the other basis, the mapping is represented by a diagonal matrix. What happens if you have a scaling rotation matrix or a matrix with complex eigenvalues? Well, actually, almost the same. If A is a 2x2 two two matrix with two complex eigenvalues, then we know that instead of A equals P D P inverse, we have A equals P C P inverse. So that's almost the same. So we can play the same game. So what can we do? We have again the same transformation from R2 to R2, represented by the matrix A. But now we choose as a basis B uh, the real part of V and minus the imaginary part of V. So what happens then if we make the same mapping over here? We have from x to t of x is represented by A. From xb to x is given by matrix PB with the appropriate basis B. And uh, from t, o, t of x in the basis B to t of x is given also by PB. What do I get as a M matrix? Well, M equals PB inverse APB, which is always the case. Now I know that A equals P, C, P inverse. And since I chose my P to consist of the real part of V and minus the imaginary part of V, the P, B and the P are exactly the same. So P, B inverse and P cancel each other out. So I'm left with the matrix C, which means that in that case, I have a matrix C over there. So by choosing an appropriate basis, a linear Transformation from R2 to R2 is either given by a diagonal matrix or given by a scaling rotation matrix.